have the ACL prepared yet, uh, I will take out the ACL setting of the navigation. Okay, there it is. We have the default module because there is nothing here, so we know we're inside of a default. But the navigation doesn't work anymore uh, because uh, the edit and add delete, all of these are not a part of the default module anymore. They are in admin and library. So we're going to adjust the navigation inside of the navigation XML file and all we have to do is to add module tag. So this is going to be a part of default and if it's default you don't really have to put it in here uh, because as if there is no uh, default section in the URI, sorry, if there is no module section in the URI, it's going to automatically assume it's default. Uh, but just to keep things organized, we're going to put it in there anyway. And the uh, list that's uh, going to be a part of library and add. edit and delete are uh, all going to be a part of admin so with that the menu should be updated but if we uh, click on anything we still get an error saying that admin book controller cannot be found or in this case library books controller um, that's because I still missed out on one last thing and that's to make sure that our controllers are named properly. Uh, as I said before, the naming convention uh, should be the namespace name uh, as a prefix of the controller name. Uh, so we have to uh, adjust them properly. So the admin controllers then become admin book controller and admin user controller and then the library one should become library books controller. The default one being in a default namespace uh, does not need a prefix because as we define here the namespace is blank. And I think this is the next thing that the uh, Zen command line tool missed out. When I create the controller inside of a module, uh, it should have put the name of the module in front of it. It shouldn't have been done uh, manually, but hopefully they will fix it in the next version. Okay, so we still have a problem with the model DB table, and that is solved exactly the same way. Uh, we're going to put the prefix, the module's name in front there and uh, we're going to have to adjust it uh, accordingly here as well new library model db table books uh, so you see now how it modules the names of these classes become really long now okay there it goes so once again add edit delete and list and it now works Okay, so we basically got the modular structure down. Uh, this has been a lot of editing, so let's recap everything that we need to do uh, when we create the modular structure from scratch, everything that we need to keep in mind. So first up, uh, we use either the Zen tool to use the create module or we create the directory structure ourselves. Uh, so that each module is in a separate directory underneath the modules directory. Then we need to bootstrap individual modules with the name of the module underscore bootstrap extending module bootstrap from Zend application. And um, you can either leave it blank or you can uh, perform some module specific bootstrapping up to you. In this case, uh, this is enough. And then in the main application bootstrap, we make sure that the default namespace uh, is um, 
located inside of modules default. Uh, it has no namespace, therefore no prefix. Uh, now that I set prefix, each class name must begin with the name of the module it's at. So admin, because it's under the admin directory, book controller. And if you have um, models that are also in a part of subdirectory, like uh, this one here, db table, then you have to deal with this loan names library for library module, model for being a model, db table for being in a db table, and books for being in books.php. Uh, so the names of the controllers and models follow the same convention, the directory name underscore as a prefix. Oh yeah, and uh, of course we got to um, make sure that the navigation XML file is updated accordingly. So that's that for the structure. We now have to take care of the ACL to make sure that our permissions uh, stay the same. Now getting the ACL together can be a bit tricky, but only because we often forget the true purpose of ACL. Uh, we are so used to think in terms of controller and action, and now we're thinking in terms of module controller action. So technically we have uh, module controller action, that's our scheme here. And uh, it so happens that when application is simple enough without any modules, our ACL resource permissions coincide with the controller and action name. Uh, what do I mean by that is that when we create our ACL structure, we make the resource and the privilege equal to the control and action names. Now that's okay, but if we forget that resources and privileges are not the same as action controller, then we end up asking questions like how do you add modules to ACL? Well, that question doesn't make any sense because um, the ACL in a, doesn't interact with MVC structure in the first place in any way. And this illusion is quite common. If you browse around for ACL and modules, you will see a number of requests asking for ACL to support a module in a new version. Uh, well, uh, hopefully that request will not be granted because it will go against what ACL stands for. So the job is to create a scheme where uh, our URI works best in terms of the resource and privileges, and it can be any way that you want. Uh, what I'm going to do is to combine the module and controller name, and I'm going to call that the resource. So this section here is going to be my resource, and this here is going to be a, a, a privilege. So essentially what I'm saying, what should the user be able to do with library and books while he can list them. So the privilege is the ability to list on the resource library books. And uh, I'm going to combine that with a colon delimiter. So uh, I don't know if that makes any sense at the moment, but once I start coding this, you will see what I mean.